Good morning, everyone. I didn't make it to any leprechaun thing on Friday, so I thought I'd wear my green today. Of course, it is the day before spring, official, so, but it ain't going to feel like it here for a little while. It's going to do a cold spell and then warm up and then do another cold spell and then warm up, you know. It's a chugging along this year. Slow and sure, but uh, so don't get too over anxious to get out and cut grass. Anybody who still cuts grass, Danny. <laughs> so it's good to have everyone here this morning. It's good to have Louise with us this morning. Thank you for coming. And um, let's see, under our announcements, okay, we have our regular prayer vigil Bible studies at Saturdays. And this coming Saturday, we're going to finish the season three of The Chosen. We're going to do... Uh, uh, episodes 7 and 8, okay? So we're going to do that next Saturday, and that's at 11 a.m. And we always eat before that, so can't be a good Methodist without eating something. So uh, so be able to everybody come and see that. Um, the Lenten service, of course, this evening is at South Webster with Tom Charles. So be sure and do that. Now, not in the bulletin, but we are going to have a sunrise service at 7 a.m. on Easter Sunday, and there will be breakfast afterwards to be determined, okay, what, ki what kind of breakfast and all that, but, uh, but Tom will be here for Easter Sunday, and uh, we found out that last Sunday that at night that he would be willing to do sunrise service for us, so we are doing that. Okay, and the big, here's the big announcement. We need everyone to, to mark this on your calendar, write it down in your bulletin now. We will also be sending out letters about this, but we have our charge conference set for the disaffiliation vote for Sunday, April 16th at 3 p.m. Okay, that's Sunday, April 16th at 3 p.m. That's one week after Easter, the very next Sunday. And so we will need to have everyone come that afternoon and make our voices known, okay? Pat, you got something else you want to say? Uh, we will need to send out letters and the group that was so gracious to send out letters to address the issue of Well, or, or even a little, maybe a little early, let the people out, because mainly we're letting people out of town know, where that's what we want, and we we'll make sure they get a, they have enough leeway. But I'm sure with enough arm twisting, we can get Judy and Karen and whoever else we did that, <laughs> and Sue, yeah. We can get that done, okay? Yes. Okay, so there's that information. Uh, we did hear some good news for Greg last week. Uh, he did make it to that appointment up in Columbus, and uh, they uh, were going to put a shunt in to the liver so he wouldn't have to be going back and have the drainage all the time. And, uh, and I think there was some encouraging news about the liver like partial transplant or something that uh, that they could do so so he had some encouraging news and he was very upbeat this week okay so that's that's the last we've heard so hopefully that that it will come through and uh, will be everything that we we've been praying for okay uh, any other announcements Okay, 
So I'm going to say it again. Sunday, April 16th, 3 p.m. Okay? I'm going to be saying that over and over again to everybody. <laughs> we want to remember this. Okay, how about a birthday or anniversary this last week? Nope. All righty. Then we're going to go to hymn number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. Hymn number 577. Now the blue hymnal, please. Please be seated. I'm glad to be with you this morning and worshiping with you. Let us pray. Christ, you are the sure foundation. And as we gather together, we worship in your name and we give you all the honor and glory and praise. We thank you for all that you have dealt with us this week, for all the challenging questions and answers that need to be dealt with. And we pray that your spirit will be guiding us. Regardless of what congregation we are with, we are all faced with a dilemma and we pray for your guidance. You've seen the lists we have of people who are ill and in need of help, both physically and above all, Lord, spiritually, that we would be united with you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for all that you have done for us beyond our imagination and we thank you for delivering us to this hour. Be with us now at this time of worship and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. <clears throat> Let us worship with our tithes and offerings. we have, Lord, is really yours, we just return a portion to you. Hopefully, we do it cheerfully and with gladness. We thank you for the many items, missionaries that we serve. We pray in your son's name, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Danny, Danny, turn the microphone off towards her. Okay, if you're, let's do our second hymn, number 369, in that blue hymnal, Blessed Assurance. Oh, I love this one, Blessed Assurance.
day long. Please be seated. When I used to go to Manly, I used to be able to stand in the middle of the aisle, and now I need a whole pulpit to stand me up. <laughs> it's amazing how we keep going, and our health kind of catches up with us. And yet, I'm very blessed. Amen. Blessed, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty savior from the house of David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember the holy covenant. This was the oath that God made for us, the oath that God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in the Lord's sight all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation for the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet on the way to peace. It's amazing how the scripture says we're all sinners. When I was a kid, I had an aunt who said, well, I just sit up on this hill and I don't sin. And you know, when I was just a kid and I thought, doesn't that lady think? Because half the time, it's my thoughts that get me into trouble. Sometimes I don't act upon them, sometimes I do. But I thought that was the strangest thing I ever heard. She was not a sinner because she just sat up there on the hill by herself. And the Lord says we are sinners. Lent began on Ash Wednesday, it was February 22nd this year. In many congregations, the ashes distributed were made from the previous year's palm branches. In some countries, and I think of the Philippines in particular, palms are burnt on Shrove Tuesday. Well, around here, the only reference I've ever met to Shrove Tuesday is all those sinnings that go on down there in the Mardi Gras on Tuesday. Now, one of our churches in town did use up all their lard and they had a pancake supper at one time. I don't think they did that this year, but that was about my knowledge of Shrove Tuesday. And some congregations gather to burn the palms with, with kind of a special service. God of tender mercy, look on us with kindness as we prepare the ashes, marking the beginning of our Lenten journey. This type of worship began in the 12th century. Earlier, Pope Gregory the Great, and some of you may have heard of Gregorian chants, that's the fellow who started all that. Well, Pope Gregory compiled the list of churches to be visited by him very much the way our district superintendent or our bishop would visit us and get acquainted with us in our congregations. Later, that was discarded, and it wasn't restored until Pope John the 23rd. Remember him? Oh, he created quite a scene, didn't he? 
He upset the apple cart. I don't know where we got that saying from, but he sure upset the apple cart. Mass in English or in your native language, he wanted everybody to know what was going on. As Protestants, as Methodists, and we have several. We've got Free Methodists, we've got Republican Methodists, we have Primitive Methodists, and now they want something else. I don't know where we all will wind up being, but we pray God's blessing and guidance. And now, as far as our Roman Catholic folks are concerned, we are separated brethren. We are no longer condemned to hell. Now, one of these upsets happened when our family was still on Staten Island. We were at the Reformed Church of Mariner's Harbor. You never heard of Mariner's Harbor, but Mariner's Harbor sure have you heard of this part of Ohio. Because what happened there is what happened to a lot of things that happened in Portsmouth. Procter and Gamble pulled out. And when they pulled out, that was the end of Mariner's Harbor and their great decline. Well, we celebrated this gathering through various opens. Open window, open door, open heart, open book, and that's the Bible. Many of our congregations there began studying the Bible. And with the Methodist congregation participation, Howard Hegeman, who was president of the New Brunswick Theological Seminary, it happens to be the oldest seminary in this country. The Dutch started it. Well, he was invited to deliver the message at St. Michael's Roman Catholic Church in our neighborhood. Never been done before. And we were blessed. We heard the word. Happy. Everything that we planned went according to schedule. Now, where I come from, the members of the Roman Catholic Church were predominant. But I still think you've heard this expression, I'm giving up something for Lent. Anybody heard that? Well, what do we give up? Candy, pies, cakes, stuff that we shouldn't be eating anyway. And I even heard one person tell me she was giving up gum. I said, giving up gum. Struck me mighty funny. In other words, all desserts, and especially meat on Friday. Well, you may have already heard about this wager. There was a fella down in Cincinnati way named Lou. And Lou decided that he wanted to make an investment in his McDonald franchise. And he told Mr. Croc, Ray Croc, you know, I think we ought to serve fish sandwiches. What did Mr. Croc say? Oh, I don't know if it's for your ears. Hell no, I'm not going to serve fish sandwiches in my franchises. Well, Lou was a very determined individual. And he said, okay, Mr. Croc, you come up with your, what he called, hula sandwich, and I'll make my fish sandwiches. So come that Lent, Mr. Croc sold 350 fish sandwiches. It's reported that Mr. Croc sold six sandwiches. And Lou said, I bet he bought them himself. <laughs> and you know the rest of the story. Today, customers eat more than, get this, 300 million McDonald's fillet of fish sandwiches. Can you imagine that many? The rest of the story. 
Now, if you'd said to me as a kid, well, I'm going to give up meat because our Lord died on Friday, that would have made some sense to me. But just to condemn me for hell for not having a fish sandwich or a non-meat didn't make too much sense. We were not to give up. We were to give in. To do something extra, something special, in addition to what we were already supposed to be doing. Feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, visit the sick or homebound, care for God's creation, visit the imprisoned. And sometimes we need an advocate for these things, and I really am amazed at the work Gary Hopkins does with prisoners. That is something that uh, the Ministerial Association has spent some time on because he has spoken to them in the past. And there are a couple of fellows who said to me, I just don't have the heart for that type of ministry. And not everybody does. But we do have an advocate for us. My husband spent a few years at the Orient Correctional Facility. So I know, you know, firsthand from his experiences what a trying time that is in trying to encourage and bring the Lord to prisoners. Fasting's nothing new. In the NIV, chapter 58 of Isaiah is actually in my scriptures titled, True Fasting. Sharing your bread with the hungry. Shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Clothe the naked and do not turn your back on your own. Join a Bible study group if you haven't been. Spend more time with your devotions. Be nicer, be kinder, be more loving. Are you blessed? A few years ago, Pope Francis went on a med an ecumenical trip, they called it, to Sweden. And he came up after this conference with his blessings. Blessed are those who remain faithful while enduring evils inflicted on them by others, and forgive them from your heart. Blessed are those who look into the eyes of the abandoned and marginalized and show them their closeness. Blessed are those who see God in every person and strive to make others discover them too. Blessed are those who protect and care for our common home. Blessed are those who renounce their own comfort in order to help others. Blessed are those who pray and work for full communion between Christians. A lot of blessings and a lot of thoughts and a lot of hard work. A couple of these blessings have been made more aware to me since I've become a board member of the Scioto Christian Ministry. They run the daycare and they have a homeless shelter. And Access, Scioto County, you may have seen their vans. They transport a variety of individuals, elderly, disabled, non-drivers, workers, they have opportunities to go to medical treatments or appointments. They go to physical therapy. They do any number of things that are considered helpful. Ezekiel tells us, and Ezekiel is out there with the shepherds, and he says, as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. Remember later on, the Lord said he was the good shepherd. I will rescue them 
from all places where they were scattered. And then he says, I will make a covenant of peace with them and rid the land of wild beasts so that they may live in the desert and sleep in the forest in safety. I will bless them in the places surrounding my hill. I will send down showers in season. There will be showers of blessing. Matthew also contains the Beatitudes in chapter 5. I heard this statement, the Beatitudes contain the identity card. Just as you have an identification card telling who you are, the Beatitudes are the identity card of a Christian because they outline the face of Christ, his way of life. Jesus spoke to his following at the place of Seven Springs believed to be where the miracle of the five loaves and two fishes happened. I believe it happened. Now I've heard somebody suggested, and this is what we have to be careful of when we look for different things. Oh, well, everybody came together and they were so glad that Jesus was there that they all shared their luncheon. I can't accept that. Cannot accept that. I think there was a miracle. I believe it happened. I believe they were blessed. I've learned that the Church of the Beatitudes is located on the mount of the same name. Beatitudes, they, they just have a marvelous place there. A dig ba way back in the 30s located a 4th century Byzantine church. And then in the end of uh, the 30s, an architect, Antonio Berzali, designed an eight-shaped building to commemorate eight Beatitudes. It has a copper roof, and under the windows is a passage from Scripture. And you can see the Sea of Galilee from the windows. Well, reading this reminded me that George Walker Bush visited the site. And I remember it was a time when people were calling Mr. Bush Hitler. Well, a member of the Pleasure Guild, we raise money for the local, for the Scioto Memorial Hospital. And this lady requested to speak at our meeting. Uh, she said, I don't know what political party you are inclined to support, but I do know this. Mr. Bush is not a Hitler. She said, I was that Austrian, blue-eyed, blonde youngster who was chosen to present a bouquet of flowers to Mr. Hitler. And that was the end of my childhood and the beginning of the nightmare. After the ceasefire, my mother was in the hospital. We were hungry. Finally, some packages arrived. And written across the directions, it said, from the United States of America, we had never seen such a product. So my father cooked, and we ate, and we ate, and my mother ate beans from the United States. We were blessed. We were exceedingly happy. She continued, you guild members and others in this community have no idea, no conception of how blessed you are. Now, our blessings may not be as dramatic as Trouty's life, but we have some drama in our lives, don't we, at times? A few Sundays ago, I was walking up Hogan Street from Valley Church, and I saw some violets appearing. 
Oh, I thought, oh, those poor things. They don't know it's going to get cold again. But seeing them brought back a flood of memories. Every spring, Mom would take us kids to pick violets. After my sister was born, well, we had to pull her in the little red wagon. That was my brother's. And one memorable day, my brother and I walked and Mom pulled. We went as far as what was known as the Split Rock, where Anne Hutchinson had come down from Rhode Island seeking comfort, seeking her way of worshiping. And she hid from the Indians, and they did massacre her. My elementary school was Hutchinson. Do you know the expression, looks like death warmed over? Anybody heard that? Oh, she looks like death warmed over. Well, I do believe that expression was applied to me after my second surgery. My mom and sister came from the Pittsburgh area. I couldn't express myself. I just felt terrible. And I'd heard that they'd come through a snowstorm. It was November. They had sleet and hail, and it was just one miserable drive. And as mom came to the bed, she said, IT. Now, I knew what IT meant. She, her parents were from Finland, and IT meant mother. And when I heard that, I thought, you know, Lord, I think I'm going to get well. My other visitor that day was somebody you know, Tom Williams. Well, believe me, he had a beautiful prayer, and it felt like last rites to me. I thought, this is it. This is the end. You can imagine Tom's expression when he saw me the next time. I no longer look like death warmed over. I was so blessed, are you? I'm happy. In the Greek language, don't get me wrong, I don't know Greek, but I checked with some authority. My husband had to take Greek in seminary. Now, for some reason, he didn't have to take Hebrew. I don't know, they gave him a dispensation, I guess, for being in the service or being older or something like that. Anyway, he was so thankful he, didn't, he just had to master Greek. And there are two words. This word, and don't even ask me to pronounce it, E-V-D-A-I-M-O-N-I-K-O-S means blessed. And this word, M-A-K-I-R-I-O-S, means happy. Well, that satisfied me because I was concerned when I had read that those Beatitudes were translated as happy. Jamie, Jamie back there, he's got several translations. He can probably look this up for you. And I realized if you want to be a fulfilled Happy person, there is that way, and it's recorded in the gospel, in Luke. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. That's where we are. Several weeks ago, and maybe some of you saw this, it was on Jeopardy. It was the contest for young people, high schoolers. Yeah. See that? 
three of the brightest, intelligent young contestants were asked to name the first five words of the 23rd Psalm. Anybody see that? Yeah. What happened? Silence. Silence. The Lord is my shepherd. What are we saying about our youth? They do not know the 23rd Psalm. <coughs> the Lord is our shepherd. Blessed are they who have not seen and have believed. Let us pray. Lord, we ask to be strengthened. We ask that we be sustained and guided. We ask for the gift of unity and peace in the world. We ask, O oh Lord, for the gift of your spirit, enabling us to penetrate the depth of the whole truth, and grant that we, we share with others. Teach us to overcome division, send us your spirit, lead us to unity as brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are obedient to your will. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us and sustaining us and blessing us. We need you. We need you more than we can possibly imagine. And we are so thankful to be a part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe it's blessed be the tie that binds, 557.
Father, we are thankful that we have been able to worship without fear, to count our blessings, to be showered with blessings from above. And we pray that we will walk in your way, not only this day, but in the days ahead of us. Love us and guide us in all our undertakings. In Jesus' name, amen.